This is a WA87 from Warm Audio. I'm going to tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. This particular mic is uh, about six years old. It's version one. In fact, it's the first microphone that Warm Audio released. Released. I bought it kind of on a whim. It's five ninety nine, dollars as I recall. Retail price. Uh, they went on sale for four ninety nine when version two came on. I'm going to get to that part too. Uh, the, the price, but uh, I've had it for six years, so that says something. I still have it, uh, and it does say something. I, I like the mic, and it was my go-to mic for a few years on uh, on lead vocals. You know, part of it because it was kind of new, and I get I guess, but uh, you know, it worked. It worked on on uh, lead vocals, especially male vocals. And uh, and I'll get to that part too. Why I think it works a little better on male vocals and female vocals. But uh, and I've got for uh, female vocals an Aventone CV12 that I've had for about twelve or fifteen years now. It's kind of almost vintage, and, and that mic is great, man. You know, I'll review that one too, maybe because uh, you know for the price, about the same price as this. You know, I don't know how they are now, but th when they came out, they were actually excellent microphones, and a lot of people still use them like me. Lately, I bought a, a I, I just purchased a Lawton Audio uh, FC357 Clarion, which is a large diaphragm FET. Now, this is an FET condenser, too. In the backup, and something most of you already know, is this is based on a U87 by Neumann. So getting to what I like and don't like about this mic. What I like is the clarity, and I think you can hear from this recording that the, the clarity is great, man. It's, I have no EQ on it. I'm going straight into a warm audio tone beast. You can maybe see the meters moving back there as I speak. Uh, set on clean, you know, the clean setting, not the vintage setting, because it's kind of two preamps in one, uh, or even something in between those. Uh, so it's got some clarity, and which is one thing I, I like about it. The high end is not overly hyped. Only when you compress the you know the source, especially vocal, the compressor vocal, uh, highly, the, you may maybe need to come in and work on the uh, the s the s's the sibilance. But uh, you know under normal conditions, it's nice. It's got a good top end. I've heard better, but. Uh, it's definitely good, and if you don't get right into the microphone, it's even better. I'm about six inches away, which I think is probably one of the better spots for this. If I get in, you can hear it probably get a little deeper and even a little deeper. I don't have a windscreen, so I don't want to get too much, but I'm right on it right here. Which brings me to the thing that I don't like about it, and that's the low end. Maybe you heard it get robust as I moved into it, and it should because most... Uh, microphones like this have when it's set to cardioid which this one is right now have that proximity effect i can't switch this to uh, omni which would reduce that substantially the uh, proximity effect but i kind of like the idea that you you know you can use the microphone to express yourself so if you want to get intimate and you're talking and your honey's ear you do that and you know you start talking regular you might want to back up so uh so, you know, but the low end uh, compared to some of the other mics that I have is not, it's not great. Uh, I've got a TLM, Neumann TLM 103 that's got massive low end. Uh, and some of the Aventone's got better low end than this. So I think that's, that's probably the, the one thing I don't like about it. But that's why I believe it does work on male voices because male voices are lower and it kind of works that better, those voices better, whereas a female voice is typically higher. So because it doesn't have the low end some mics do, you know, it may sound slightly uh, light or, you know, not as filled as, uh, as it would normally sound in the, in the studio, the voice. So, uh, so I, you know, I, I quickly found out I, I like this on male vocals. Wasn't crazy about it on female vocals, but, you know, I, I used it a little bit. I had to try it out on that and see for myself. 
I put on guitar cabs, nice acoustic guitar, very nice, minus the fact that it doesn't have a great, you know, big, fat, heavy bottom end, which can work, you know, you make that work. But, uh, so acoustic guitars is nice. Uh, I never did mic a bass cab with it, so, or, or a set of drums. I think I used it maybe on an, as an overhead a couple times on drums. Uh, and it works, you know, it works. It's a full frequency microphone and can take a little sound pressure, which I don't have those specs in front of me, but you can find out. But this is a version one. They, Warm Audio released a version two about a year ago or so. And I believe that the, the major difference is the bottom end, but you know, it's a good mic and, uh, they're kind of hard to find now, this version one. Well, you can't find them. You go and reverb and find them. A few people offloaded them when the version two came out. But uh, I kept this one. I have not tried the version two. And I may one day. But uh, but again, man, if you can find one of these used for some like 400 bucks or something, I'd buy it. It's, uh, it's a good investment. If it's in good shape, it's a good investment. You know, I think overall, it's a good microphone, uh, good quality. Uh, and again, man, I like everything really about it except the very, the beefy bottom end. So, so Pershing Wells here, Digital Socolay Productions down south in Houma, Louisiana. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button, please. And the bell icon. I got to say that because I got, I'm doing this for YouTube.